start thinking in quantitative detail about how the information in each of these specimens conveys a story. Then we move beyond the classical classification system and move into the period of mineral evolution, the idea that minerals tell a story. Hi, I'm Bob Hazen. I'm a research scientist at the Carnegie Institution's Geophysical Laboratory in Washington, DC. I love minerals. I've, I've collected, I've studied minerals since I was about eight years old. I, I love minerals because of their beautiful colors. I love them because of their crystal forms. And every mineral tells a story. Now, my recent work has been kind of calling into question one of the basic aspects of mineralogy, that's classification. So why do you classify things? You need to be able to talk to other people, to identify what you're looking at, to have a systematic way of characterizing and naming objects. This goes all the way back to Aristotle. It goes back to Linnaeus, when Linnaeus talked about the species of plants and animals and minerals. And in mineralogy, it turns out that a species is defined by two characteristics. The chemical composition, this is pyrite, its composition is FeS2, and its crystal structure, the atomic structure, and in this case it's the pyrite crystal structure. So that unique combination of composition and structure defines this is a species. Here's quartz, that's a different species, and calcite. Altogether there are about 5,500 species that have been approved by the International Mineralogical Association. So, What's the problem? Well, here's the thing. This is pyrite, defined as FeS2 in a crystal structure, but this is formed at low temperature and has one form. Here's another piece of pyrite, an ore mineral formed at much higher temperature, and here's a piece of black shale. It has pyrite grains in it, and they were formed probably by microbes in a sediment. To me, those are really different stories. And if a classification system says they're all the same, they're all pyrite, there's a problem. So I've developed a new classification system called an evolutionary system that looks at the subtle differences, the information-rich content that makes these minerals different from each other. So trace elements, minor elements, isotopes, inclusions, fluid and solid inclusions, um, all different kinds of structural features that are not normally included in the description of a mineral species and yet are very important to understanding the evolutionary context. And so at AGU this year, I'm presenting this evolutionary system in mineralogy. I hope you can come to my talks. I've got one on Thursday morning, another one that's related to it on Monday afternoon, even an e-lightning talk on, on Monday. And so you get to see a poster with some of the, the animations we do with these things. It's really exciting. Um, I, I love this stuff. It's going to be a new way of framing mineralogy that allows us to understand planetary evolution in ways we've never been able to do before. Hope to see you there.